So I'm going to be using the following tools to create this dress design. I have gotten myself some brown pattern paper, a long ruler, my small scissors, marker pen, my fabric, as well as my paper scissors. I also will be needing some measuring tape to take down my measurements. I also have my set square and my pattern master. I have some buttons which I'm going to be using and then I have a skirt hook my zip matching thread to go with my fabric and I'm using this pink George material that in my tribe you would actually tie as two wrapper but I just thought it would be cool to make a pinafore dress. I also got my interfacing which I'm going to be using to make my belts and my strap and waistbands a whole lot more stable. So the first thing you need to do is to take down some measurements. You need to measure from your nipple to nipple which will help you to plan the front panel. You need to measure your upper bust to waistline which is going to help you decide how long your panel is going to be. You need to decide on how long you want your skirt to be. You need to measure your waist and you also need to measure your shoulder strap length. So I'm going to go in and start making the pattern. The first pattern we're going to be working on is the front panel and I'm just going in here to draw a vertical line like so which is going to become my center front line. So once that is done I'm going to put my long ruler to the side and mark 26 centimeters down that vertical line and this is the distance between my upper bust and my waistline. Next up I'm going to divide my nipple to nipple point by 2 and add 5 centimeters and mark it along this horizontal shorter line on top and then for this line at the bottom here added an additional 2.25 so the line at the bottom is a bit wider than the one on top and what that will do is to help to curve out the front panel closer to your side of the dress so the vertical line here is going to be a fold so we have one piece at the end of the day i went ahead and i added a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around adding my grain line as well and if you notice towards the bottom of that side curved line i ensured it was straight because this needs to sit into the waistband of the dress which will be attached to the gathered skirt and so on. So the second pattern I'm going to be working on is the waistband and this is just basically a long rectangle that is the sort of the size of my waist and I decided to have my 10 centimeters. I ended up reducing this later on because I just thought it was too wide. I reduced it to 5 centimeters but right here I'm drawing a long line that measures 77 centimeters which is the sort of full circumference of my waist. So I'm just going in here and marking 10 centimeters, following that top line as a guide, and then joining all those 10 cm points together so the top and the bottom lines are actually straight. So once that is done, I added my seam allowance and an additional three centimeters to only one edge because you want to have a little bit more on one edge of the waistband so it wraps around at the center back where you can put a hook or a button. So after doing this, I'm just going ahead to cut out my waistband like so, the top, the bottom and the side using my paper scissors. Like I mentioned earlier on, I decided to reduce the width of my waistband to 5 centimeters. and instead of cutting one piece, you would need to cut two pieces when it's actually time to cut the pieces of the skirt to sew together. The third pattern I'll be making is the shoulder strap and the shoulder length or the shoulder strap length for me was 55 centimeters. So you need to measure from your upper bust points to your waistline on the back and that's how long your shoulder strap should be. Mine was about four centimeters wide. You can make yours thinner or wider depending on what you like. And then I went ahead and I added three centimeters on both sides of the strap. So this creates room for all overlap when it's time to attach a button and a button hole to make the strap connect to the dress. So the last piece of pattern we need to make is the in seam pocket bag and I started out by drawing a long line like so and marking the width of the pocket. So the pocket is about 15 centimeters wide and I'm just going in here to draw a one centimeter extension so that is sort of where 
the pocket we connect to the side seam of the dress so i'm just roughly making around sort of shapes because you want the pockets to accommodate your full hand like this so i curved it in such a way that it's a bit more rounded at the bottom and then it loops back into the side seam like so and then the top is sort of straight and curves in into the bottom so i went ahead and i added seam one centimeter seam allowance and two notches because you will need to cut two pairs of of this pocket bag to go on the left and on the right hand side so I'm just going in here to cut out my pocket bag pattern and I just think this is the easiest pattern to sew in the entire universe because it's pretty straightforward when it's time to attach it to the dress along the side seam so this is what the pocket pattern looks like and this would mark the end of pattern making now shall we progress to actually cutting out the pieces so i've pinned down my patterns like so and you need to cut that front panel on a fold and thankfully this fabric came already lined so i didn't need to think about how to cut lining as i'm cutting this particular pattern piece here i was cutting the lining together so i'm just going in here to cut out the first pair of the pocket bag using my fabric scissors and then going back in to cut my notches on these two sides like this and the one notch i added on the side panel of this sort of front top panel that goes on the pinna for dress so I also notched the center front point on the top and on the bottom because it will come in handy when it's time to join everything together. For the skirts, what I did was I cut a long rectangle that was twice my waistline plus six centimeters let me explain so you want to be able to gather back all of that excess back into the waist of the skirt but you want it to be bigger than your waistline so there is a little bit of volume so my waistline is 77 centimeters times two and then you add six centimeters because this additional six centimeters will give you room when it's time to join the panels together so when you have that log rectangle you divide it into two and then you divide one half into two again so you have two panels for the back and one long panel for the front so i went ahead and i also marked where i want my pockets to sit down the side seams and i aligned all of the side seams this way so i, I could cut a notch through all of them so i marked 10 centimeters down from the waistline and i just marked it with a chalk and then i cut through with a with a fabric scissors so i know exactly where my pocket bag is going to sit so I also caught my straps, I caught my waistband and I fused all of them because the fabric itself is not very thick so it needed a little bit of help to be more stable and safe. I also caught my front panel and I cut two. So I cut one in the main material and because this material came with lining sort of joins to it, I fused the lining as well so I have two pieces for my top panel. Now moving on to sewing, the first thing I like to start out with is pockets because once you get the pockets out of the way, you don't really have to think about it. And I'm just going in here to pin the two sides of this side of the skirt, the two sides of the pockets to the side seams like so. And once you pin them in place and take them to the machine, you know you just need to sew along the edge on your one centimeter seam allowance and the right sides are facing together so the right side of the pocket bag is facing the right side of the skirt and the same thing goes for the other side of this pair so once you've do, once you stitch it on that one centimeter seam allowance i went ahead and i did a zigzag stitch just to secure the edges and then i'm going back to do a top stitch that's about zero to two or zero to three centimeters wide just to ensure that the bag is on the outside like this so I've done this for the bottom and the top side and I'm going to be putting the side seams together like so. So we have one pocket bag at the end of the day when we've joined the side seam of this skirt. So starting from the top, you sew like this, you sew around the pocket bag, you come back to this point and then you sew down all the way to the hem to finish up that side of the skirt. So I'm just going in with a normal straight stitch on a one centimeter seam allowance. And when I get to this point here, I will turn into the pocket bag and sew around the curved shape that the pocket bag actually have. So if your pocket is square, you have to deal with sewing around corners. But because this pocket is round, I just have to turn the, turn the material as I sew 
all the way until I get to the hem of the dress before going back in with a zigzag stitch or if you have an overlocker you can overlock the seam so everything is nice and tidy on the inside of the dress. So this is what the side seam should look like when you are done sewing in the pocket. Because of how you constructed it, the pocket sits into the seam of the skirt of this dress. And that's why I just think it's one of the easiest ways to fix pockets because you know once you have sewn that side seam, you've automatically inserted your pocket as well. So the next step I'm doing here is I'm folding my center back edges inwards like this because I don't want to have any kind of raw edge on the center back of this dress so i just did this for the left and for the right hand side folding twice and stitching down before going ahead to think about how i'm going to fix my zip so i repeated my pocket insertion for the left and for the right hand side so i know both of my pockets are done and then i'm going to turn this inside out so i can see my center back seam so I've pinned them together like so and I'm going to go ahead and grab my zip and mark where I want my zip to stop. So I'm just using a chalk here to mark my point here and we're going to sew from the bottom all the way to that mark there and then fix the zip on the open side on the top of the skirt. This is like my go-to way of fixing zips. I don't think there's any other way I would rather do because this way is really straightforward, really easy and sort of quick to do. So that with the top side open, you know once you fix that zip on the top half, it will automatically stop where that sort of bottom stitch ends. So I've pinned my zip in place and I'm going to be sewing this on my domestic machine. So this is an invisible zip and I had to get an invisible zip footer and the thing with invisible zips is you want to fold it out like this and sew as close to the teeth as possible so by the time it's done you literally do not see the zip that's why it's called an invisible zip. Mine didn't even come out really perfect but I, I think I'm getting there in Jesus name. So the next step we're going to work on is to sew the front top panel and I have my two pieces like so and I'm just going to put Put right sides together and then pin it in place so we sew up the sides we sew up the top but leave the bottom open because we want to turn this inside out and then do an additional edge stitch so I'm just sewing here on a one centimeter seam allowance sewing all the way around turning at every necessary corner until I get to my end point for this top front panel once that is all done, I'm going to trim my corners so when I turn this inside out, it's nice and pointed on the edges for this front piece that goes in the front of the pinafore dress. So I'm just going to turn this inside out to reveal the right side of the material and push out any edges, give this a nice press so it's nice and flat and I'm going to take it back to my machine and do an edge stitch that is about 0.3 centimeters from the edge of the the panel so everything stays nice and flat and you can see my fabric almost got burnt when i was doing this but thankfully it sort of survived the heat so next up we're going to be working on the waistband of the dress and the way this works is you want to find the midpoint of the waistband and the midpoint of your top front panel and pin them together and what you have to do is sandwich that top front panel in between the waistband because we're going to be sewing this waistband from one corner around the waist along sort of the longer edge up the shorter corner like this so I'm just taking this to my machine and sewing on one centimeter seam allowance turning whenever I have to and just sewing using a normal straight stitch until you get to the very end do a back stitch to secure it in place and then you need to turn this inside out trim your corners and press it flat so once that is done, you have that piece ready to be fixed to the gathered skirt. And I've gone ahead and I've already done a loose stitch on the entire top of this full skirt piece. You can see my zip is looking good to the glory of God. I, like invisible zips are those things that I really avoided for the longest time, but I just could not avoid them anymore. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and pull the loose stitch I made to create gathers around the waistline of the skirt. You can decide to make pleats, you can decide to cut the skirt circle style, but I prefer gathers for this particular dress design because it just looks, you know, very 
very cool and it comes out really nicely so once that is all done i'm just going in here to pin the entire waistline into the waistband of the skirt and remember to give that three centimeters edge on the waistband on the top half and i'll show you later on what i mean by this so i'm just sewing in my gathers in place and then i'm going to turn the the right side the top right side of the waistband inwards like this and fold it in again a one centi an additional one centimeter and hold it down with a pin because what this will help you do is to help you conceal the seam that you just made when you were sewing the gathered waistline of the skirt to the waistband so remember to give that three centimeter edge because that is where you're going to be sewing your hook or your button which you are going to use to close off the waist of the skirt when everything is finished so once you folded everything in and all your pins are secure i'm going to go ahead and sew a 0.3 edge stitch i just find that doing this from the right side of the dress is a lot easier because you don't have to think about if it looks nice on the right side of the dress so once you get to the edge you just do a back stitch to secure it in place and then we can move on to the shoulder straps so I've pinned together the right side, right sides of both of my shoulder straps and we're going to be sewing up the longer sides like this. So you want to leave the, the top and the bottom open so you can easily turn this inside out and then you go back in, fold in those um, the top of the tunnel. Make sure to give this a press though before you sew this, it just make your life so much easier, believe me. So once you stitch that, it should look somewhat like this. You give it a nice press if necessary. You stitch along both the left and the right hand side around the edges before going ahead to fix your buttons. My machine came with a buttonhole foot, so I didn't have to go pay anybody to do this for me. You just, there's a way it works and I just understand it and I'm very grateful for that. If you guys would like me to do a separate video on this, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be glad to show you how it actually works. So once that is done, I'm just going in here with my tiny scissors and cutting my buttonholes open so it's ready to go. So I've gone ahead and I've stitched on my hook and my eye along the waistband. So when you clasp this like this, it's close off the waistline of the dress. For the buttons that sit on the front top panel, I ensured they were 1.5 centimeters from the top and the side edge to ensure symmetry on the left and on the right hand side. And I'm just going in here to mark it with a chalk. For the ones on the back, they are 4 centimeters away from the zip. So it would look like the one on the right hand side is a bit farther, but don't forget that side has a 3 centimeter overlap because of the hook. So I went ahead and I stitched on my buttons, the ones, the two in the front and the two at the back. You can either wear this as a crisscross the way it was shown at the beginning of the video or you can wear it sort of straight from front to back. Just be reminded that if you wear it crisscross, it might be a bit tighter since it would require more to crisscross at the back. So this is the finished dress. I decided to style it with a simple white shirt that has this really cool organza see-through material. I remember sharing a picture of the dress on Instagram and you guys suggested the best way to style this would be with some kind of see-through thing. So it's not too conservative, still stylish and still quite elegant. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video all the same. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to know all of your comments, suggestions and ideas down below and until my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye